All right, so Sea Otter, it's that time of year again. And while I'm not there, Evan Christensen is, so stay tuned to his coverage on bikepacking.com. Uh, but now that Sea Otter has kind of turned into the largest cycling trade show, at least in the United States, we see a lot of products drop each year. And this year has proven to be no different. I'll try and publish a handful of these videos just to update folks on what's going on, what's launching. But in this video, we're gonna talk about the new 510 Kestrel, the Advent X V2 rear derailleur, a saddle with a handle, and more. Let's do it. Before we jump into it, I just want to mention that this video is supported in part by Salsa Cycles. The Salsa Rangefinder is an awesome bike for someone just starting to mountain bike. The geometry is deliberately not XC race, but instead trail riding inspired, which instills confidence and is simply more fun. It's available in 29 or 27.5 plus wheel sizes and has the most accessible pricing in Salsa's mountain bike range. So check out the link right here or also find the link in the description below for more details. So WTB launched a collection of new saddles and one is really interesting, the Devo, a saddle that comes with a built-in handle to help haul your bike around. Although WTB claims it was built for heavy e-bikes, what about heavy and loaded bikepacking bikes. It seems like a perfect option for bikepackers. WTB claims that you can't notice the handle while pedaling, which of course was my first question. And the Devo comes with improved base flex and damping to make it more forgiving and comfortable while pedaling over rough terrain. Logan actually did a fantastic job reworking WTB's press release for bikepackers in mind, which is hilarious. And that link can be found in the description below. The Devo comes in a variety of orientations and price points, starting at 96 USD. WTB also launched the gravel-focused Gravelier saddle. It packs in several features that will appeal to riders who like pedaling hard off-road, including a perennial relief cutout designed to improve blood flow and reduce numbness. And it comes with a shorter length and a new fusion form-based technology, which allows WTB to custom tune the ride of the saddle. In the Gravelier's case, it's reportedly tuned to offer a supportive and responsive flex that optimizes power transfer and simultaneously absorbs vibration. The Gravelier is offered in four versions to suit various budgets. One of my favorite shoes that I've ever used, um, and I still have them today, is the 510 Kestrel Boa Pro and the Lace Up. And I have them today because well, they're super robust, and while they weren't intended to be light, they are durable. So I was definitely curious when 510 launched the new Kestrel Boa this week, which gets a new look and a complete redesign as a down country shoe. Man, Pinkbike really should have trademarked that term. Oh well. The lightweight clip-in shoe is designed around a pedal performance oriented stiff shank with details designed for all day comfort and burly all mountain use. Not to mention the shoe looks fantastic in my opinion, coming in a variety of colors. That said, they are spending at 230 USD. So I've been using the Advent X uh, rear derailleur on my grappler now for two years, I think. Yeah, about two years and it's fantastic. Not only is it super easy to dial in, but it shifts great and works with micro shift flat bar shifters or those drop bar levers. The new version is still 10 speed compatible, but according to micro shift, the new and improved rear derailleur design shifts better than its predecessor. It now has a 20 millimeter shorter cage and a revised pulley position, offering more chain wrap on the cassette and derailleur pulleys, resulting in superior shifting response, cassette durability, and chain retention. So they did all this by moving the guide pulley forward and the tension pulley back, resulting in more of a S curve as the chain kind of snakes its way through the derailleur. As it shifts, more teeth are actually engaged enabling it to find a ramp on the cassette in a shorter period of time. The gap between the tension pulley and the large cassette cogs has also been reduced from 15 millimeters to six millimeters. And yes, it still is compatible with current Advent X components and it's still 
77 USD, but unfortunately it won't be available until August. Finally, for the six year running seared Nevada Brewing Company asked Chico, California based Paul Components Engineering to help them organize a one of a kind bike to display at the Sea Otter Classic event and then raffle it off to raise funds in support of a nonprofit group. Paul contacted Shell at Money Bikes in New Mexico to ask if he would chip in by donating one of his signature Schwinn Cruiser mountain bike conversions as the base for the build. And of course he agreed. So Shell used a 1949 Schwinn Cruiser that he chopped, bent, mitered, and welded to create a retro futuristic reinterpretation with disc brakes and clearance for 29 by 2.6 inch knobby tires. The bike looks really awesome. It looks fantastic. And it's specced with some other awesome brands like Velocity, White Industries, Phil Wood, Outer Shell, just to name a few. So if you wanna to enter to win, all you have to do is donate $5 to the Outdoor Alliance nonprofit, and that link can be found in the description below. If you like what you saw in this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell, and consider joining the Bikepacking Collective. Support from our members helps sustain this channel and everything we do at bikepacking.com. The Bikepacking Collective has a lot of perks, including the twice annual Bikepacking Journal. So for more details, click on the card in the top right corner, or you can also find a link in the description below. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, pedal further.